time eight the big freeze i gotta say like i only remember watching this in pieces i don't think i ever watched this fully through because when i was watching this over to make this review man <laughs> there were a lot of things i don't remember and one of the things i loved about land for time eight is how it starts like a nature documentary like in the other movies they usually start off with long time ago there were the dinosaurs but they actually do a little bit of documentary here which is so cool beasts seem so unlike us in some ways, they weren't so different at all. Like people, they came in all sizes and shapes and colors. They use a lot more shadowing in this one as well, which is pretty interesting. Some could swim. It just has this walking with dinosaurs feel. And I'm actually liking it. If they made a whole other movie with just this and these animations, I'd be so happy. Some could even whistle. Isn't that the sound of an elk? They must have used that for like seven different dinosaurs. Anyways, after all of that, that three minute documentary style thing that went on a bit longer than the other movies, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And it made me so excited to see this. I had so much fun watching this over. So it zooms in on Ducky. <laughs> So she's giving birth to herself. <laughs> yeah, guys, this was from the movie. That's why I used the thumbnail. Anyway, she's having a big problem because Spike makes it so hard for her to sleep. He takes up a lot of space and he makes snoring noises. Go further back than anyone can remember. The next morning, she is very, very tired. The young ones are being taught by Mr. Thicknose. Mr. Thicknose looks as though he's a Pachyrhinosaurus who is teaching the kids about life and all of its wonders. Littlefoot is constantly interrupting to ask questions, which I completely understand, but then it comes to the point where he's very annoying. Often proved to frustrating to the- <laughs> That's just rude. Like, I get it. He was just talking about how some dinosaurs would use that big trumpeting noise so that leaves would fall from the trees. I think that's a crock of shit, by the way, but that's what Mr. Thick Nose was saying. And then instead of being like, hey, can I try this? Littlefoot, in the middle of while he's talking, knowing it's going to make a loud noise, does that in the middle of why this guy is talking and scares everyone, which is so disruptive and so freaking disrespectful. And then he has a nerve to be like, I don't know why he doesn't like us. Maybe he doesn't like kids. I'm like, bitch, it's just you. You were the only one there making all that noise and constantly interrupting. Others are using the cranio impactus method first of all i think that would hurt the stegosaurus maybe i'm wrong maybe they didn't have very thick necks but from all the portrayals that we've seen it doesn't look like their necks are very thick this is the equivalent of a horse ramming its full body weight into a tree do you know what happens when a 2000 pound animal with a very long slender neck flies into something at breakneck speed its body momentum is going to cause its neck to become an accordion and it's going to snap its neck in half you have something as large as a stegosaurus with a tiny head and very slender neck i don't think this is the way that they would normally get food it would make more sense for them to use the spike tail or the end of their tail to do that with the tree i figured that would have a lot more power than breaking their freaking skull open anyway so after littlefoot is an asshole often proved to frustrating to the <laughs> Mr. Thicknose rams into a tree after being scared by the noise. Ah! What do you know? It works. I wanted to slap him so freaking badly. Like, and then it's his stupid ass face. When he's like, what did I do wrong? Bitch, I will take your neck and wrap it around your body three times. I don't know why Mr. Thicknose even bothers to talk to us. We just seem to upset him. What do you mean, we? Exactly. Thank you. Nobody else had a problem. I mean, he was getting upset at Sarah. I mean, sorry, not Sarah. He was getting upset at Ducky and Spike because Ducky kept arguing with Spike during the class. The thing is, I understand where Ducky's coming from because she was so frustrated. Like, she's absolutely mad at Spike in this one. She's getting annoyed with him and he doesn't get blamed for anything. She gets blamed for everything when he's also doing it. And I can understand how that could be very frustrating. Please try to stay awake. <laughs> That is so not fair. You were asleep too. Why did she pick Ducky? on- Ducky! <gasps> Could you please be a little quieter? Like Spike. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I feel so bad for her. That's so rude. Spike doesn't get reprimanded when he's doing exactly the same thing. Then I, I'd be like, you wait. <laughs> You, you laugh now. You wait till we go home. Then on top of that, Spike eats all of her lunch that her mom left for her. It's very frustrating, so Ducky's not having a great time. You really think Mr. Thick knows upset? Well, how would you feel if someone dropped a big old piece of fruit on your head? So they all start playing, and yes, there are inconsistencies with the animation in this one as well. They're hilarious. <laughs> and while Sarah is tossing the ball, or the watermelon, or whatever that thing is, she sees Ducky. And she's like, what's going on with you, Ducky? And Ducky tries to explain how she's feeling, which makes no sense, because she's basically saying that she's experiencing anger, right? But... Ducky's been angry before. It's not like this is a, a brand new feeling. We've seen her upset before. And it doesn't make sense that she would have survived all this time and not be upset. Maybe it's not her go-to, but she's like, what does this feel like? You know what it feels like. You've seen it on other people. It's weird, whatever. I can understand if she didn't know she was in love, but being angry is something everybody experiences. But anyway, Sarah is like, yeah, you're not sick. You're mad. And she's like, what do I do? And Sarah asks her if she remembers what she's mad at. And then she sees Spike playing around. She's like, yeah, I remember. Thing, you're just mad. Mad? Yeah. Really? Hmm. Huh. What do you know? I am mad. Who am I mad at? Don't you know? Oh. <laughs> Need yet another one. <laughs> I know, all right. <laughs> sorry in that moment i would have been like Ugh. you know when you just look at someone and you're like yo i love that person so much but then at other times you're like ew get away from me what what was i thinking <laughs> and that's kind of what it's like with spike he's so annoying not to mention ducky hasn't been treated exactly fair so i do like this movie also for one other reason not just the dialogue but seeing the interactions between the families we don't get to see a lot of that in the other movies and in this one we do get to see some of the interactions between ducky and her mom and when i had made my fan fiction one of them the one with the light yes land before light when i had made that one there was a lot of interaction between spike and ducky and their mom and their dad at home but at that time, I had not seen this, and I didn't know what that interaction was like, and I was kind of spot on. So Ducky tells Sarah that she's mad at Spike. Meanwhile, Spike is going off and doing what he does 90% of the time, which is eating. <laughs> it's the human teeth for me, bruv. <laughs> While Spike is eating, he finds a smaller Spike tail named Tippy, who I thought for the first half of the movie was a girl. And even though this is like the third time watching this movie, maybe straight through, maybe not, I still end up thinking it was a girl. If there's one thing certain from this picture is that Spike tail babies are very ugly. And what is going on with the shadow? Look at her shadow. What is going on? What is making that shadow right there? So weird. <laughs> Now remember, Tippy, bolt your food. That way you can eat more. Look, Mama! Friend! So we meet Tippy's mom, and she's honestly very kind and sweet. I don't know her name, so I just call her Marsha. There are really people called Marsha. My live-in helper was named Marsha as well. I'm just not realizing what an odd name it is. Marsha. Marsh. Interesting. Why, hello there! I didn't know there were any spike tails around here. How nice! <laughs> Ew. She didn't even say anything about your looks or complimenting you or anything. Why are you losing your shit? So Marsha tells Spike that this herd of Spike Tails just arrived to the Great Valley and his family has to come over and meet them. Friend! Yes, he seemed very sweet. Why does Tippy look like the, the baby from that old dinosaur show? I hated that thing so badly. My father introduced this to me when I was younger and I did have a huge crush on Robbie. And now I look back at it and I'm like, Ugh. Not the mother, not the mother. <sighs> not the mama. <laughs> Why did she sound like a cat trying to blast out a mean shit? That's right, Ducky. You shit that brick. So Sarah is going ahead and tutoring Ducky on how to be mad and Ducky's having a hard time at it and then they start the mad song. Don't go around pretending that there's nothing wrong with you. What do you do? We get ma 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 mad! <laughs> Come on, Ducky, put some backbone into it. I'm trying. <laughs> Disgusting! 
The song actually goes on for a while. And then we see Littlefoot approaching his grandfather, but before he can go in, he overhears his grandfather talking to Mr. Thicknose. Oh no. He seems quite bright, but regrettably I find that he has a very negative attitude. He doesn't seem to realize that I am the oldest and wisest in the Great Valley. He needs to learn some respect. Honestly, he does. And it's funny because Gourmet never really tells Littlefoot. Like, he has his own way of disciplining. And grandparents are usually much easier on the grandchildren than they are on their actual children. But later on, Gourmet basically tells him, like, look, it's, it's all about a dignity thing. Like, you worked hard to get somewhere, and then someone's always undermining you. And then he goes in a roundabout way. Instead, he should have been just like, Littlefoot, you wouldn't like someone doing that to you. Don't do that to him. It's very disrespectful. And if you love us, it makes us look bad like we didn't train you. I find Littlefoot to be a lot more annoying in the later movies for some reason and honestly it while it is very annoying it's also kind of interesting that they would go that route because he's the main character and everyone's supposed to love him but he is real they have written him to be real in my audio dramas he's always very annoying and stupid and i never even factored in these movies when i was just doing his thing he's just freaking retarded like not in the mental illness way just in the meme culture kind of like stupid jerk face type of way he doesn't consider other people and he makes a lot of stupid dumb mistakes that make you think that something is like wrong with him and he doesn't have a lot of discipline his grandparents do let him get away with a lot and he's growing which makes him very well not relatable but you can understand that he's a real person you see him more as a real person because main characters aren't perfect all the time nobody is perfect all the time so them taking that route of making him annoying in the later movies is actually pretty cool and i respect them for doing that because realistically that's how somebody growing up would be. And as kids get older, they'll try things. He's also in new social settings that he's never been in before with other adults. So it would make sense that if he wasn't taught, hey, maybe not make a loud noise when somebody is speaking, then he's not going to know. But it's just the entitlement later on though, like, oh my god, the sun revolves around my long ass neck. And because I interrupted you while you were speaking and caused you to hurt yourself, well, you must not like kids. It's so funny because he can see the outrage when other people do it, but he can't see it on himself. Little foot, is that you? Yes, Grandpa. Your grandmother was beginning to worry. I'm sorry. Are you mad at me, Grandpa? Why would I be mad at you, Little Foot? And notice how respectful he is to his grandfather? You can practically see the halo inundating the atmosphere around his head. I saw you talking to Mr. Thicknose. Oh, Littlefoot, I know you're not disrespectful, but for some reason you've gotten off on the wrong foot with- What? Okay, I understand. You know, this is what I can't, I cannot, I cannot take this. I have met so many people where their, their children or grandchildren will come out and do something horrible. And teachers and other kids will be telling them, hey, your son or your daughter did this. And they're like, not my baby. My baby would never do that. My son is a good boy. Oh, well, your son went out there and robbed this person and, and hit this other person. Not my baby. My baby would never do that. You know, the cops are after your son because your son did this violent crime. No, they're just picking on him. Um, at some point, your child has to be held accountable. Everybody else is saying that they saw your child did something, and your main thing is no, he didn't do anything wrong, because apparently, if he only shows his good side around you, that must mean that's how he is with everybody else, right? And I think it's very damaging, and quite irresponsible of the caretaker, and I've known people like that in my life. We had a friend of the family, and she was just like that. Her son is very sweet, don't get me wrong. He's sweet with us but he also hangs around with a lot of drug dealers and all that stuff and hangs out with really bad crowds and so yeah how is it that the cops are always at your house but they're not at your neighbor's house but yet somehow it's the cops fault at some point you've got to have some kind of accountability because by the kid not having accountability you're not helping them nobody's gonna care you're just gonna be a nuisance to society which is exactly what Littlefoot starts to become <laughs> You know, Littlefoot, Grandma and I have you, but Mr. Thicknose has nobody. Really, he has nothing but his dignity. You should never do anything to rob someone of it. His 
grandfather is very wise, though, and he has his own way of talking to Littlefoot, and I'm sure he didn't talk to his daughter like that. I'm sure when Meagor and Gorme were raising Denise, they were like, um, girl, get your ass back in the house. Like, because grandparents just talk differently to their children than they do to their grandchildren. It's just a thing. I have seen it firsthand, not only in my family, but also in other people's family, where their child will be an adult and be saying something and the grandparents will be the parents of the child will be like, you watch your mouth, girl. You may you may be an adult, but I'm still your mama. But then the grandchildren will talk back to them and they'll be like, honey, okay. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> Damn, boy, he said. Ah! And I won't say anything to grandma about this. It'll be our little secret. Thanks, Grandpa. Wait, brat. So then Littlefoot and his grandparents head off to sleep. <laughs> this is... Oh, God. So we can see there that Littlefoot's grandmother is on the left, the grandfather's on the right. Littlefoot's grandmother has a lighter underbelly. Littlefoot's grandfather has the darker underbelly. All right, watch them do a switcheroo. Zoom in. And now Grandma's on the right and Grandpa's on the left. I don't know why this is so hilarious to me. But I even picked this up early on. I was like, hmm, wait a minute. Anyway, Littlefoot wakes up because some cold things start falling on his nose. And he's like, whoa, how cool. He's never seen snow before. And he goes back to sleep. And apparently when dinosaurs sleep, they sleep in a very deep slumber. Because I have my heating pad on at my feet because my feet get really, really cold. And my partner likes to sleep with it freezing. And I will wake up in the middle of the night because my feet are cold. But then again, I'm a very light sleeper. He sleeps like a freaking rock. Like I've dropped pans in the kitchen and he's still sleeping. Oh. Dogs have been barking in the room and he's still sleeping. If I hear one of the dogs shift to turn, I wake up. If I hear something outside, I wake up. If I hear the rabbit scratching in the kitchen, I wake up. When I have to turn, I wake up and I turn. Like I am a really, really light sleeper. And the only way I'll sleep deeply is if I haven't slept in a few days or I'm medicated. Anyway, the next day, Littlefoot tells Thick Nose about frozen sky sparkle things and Mr. Thick Nose and the others don't believe him. He tells them that these frozen sky stars fall down and then when you touch them, they turn to water. Water. Mr. Thicknose just laughs it off. He's heard of this kind of thing, but it never happens in the Great Valley. Which is Mr. Thicknose's fault because I would have been like, hmm, what do you mean, Littlefoot? I'm pretty sure if Littlefoot was on his good side, though, Mr. Thicknose would not have ridiculed him like that. It's not right to ridicule people like that. I would be asking more questions, like, well, why didn't anybody else see it? And he's like, well, everyone else is sleeping, which is always so convenient, right? That Littlefoot's the only one who sees this stuff, and nobody, no other kids in the Great Valley, nobody's seen this? Okay. But like I was saying, if Littlefoot had been on Mr. Thicknose's good side and not been a complete asshole to him, Mr. Thicknose probably would have believed him or been more inclined to respect him. And I completely don't blame Mr. Thicknose in this because if you don't respect someone, why should they respect you? You believe me? Don't you? Oh, sure. Me believe you. But then me believe anything. Yo, I love how Petrie gets more savage as the movies continue. It's so freaking amazing. I love it so much. Anyways, later, Ducky is playing with her brothers and sisters. And I realized early, I thought all of her siblings were her sisters. And you notice, you notice, it's very sad and nobody talks about this, but listen carefully. Here, we see three other siblings. And throughout the other movies that come after this, you see these other three. And she makes a comment about her brothers and sisters, which means that there are male swimmers in this clutch as well, which I never considered. I didn't even remember that. I thought Spike was the only boy and all of her siblings were sisters. But no, there are males there too, which is interesting, right? But there are only three of them. I know you're wondering what the hell does this have to do with anything? Where are the others? Ducky had a clutch of what, five to seven siblings? Sarah had other sisters. They were with her parents and then they just eventually disappear. Nobody talks about it. Nobody realizes, hey, the other babies are missing. What happened to the other two babies? What happened to Sarah's siblings? In the first Land Before Time movie, Littlefoot was the only egg that was left. In later movies, they show that long necks can have a clutch of eggs. And it's even believed that Apatosauruses had many children. Although the theory is right now that they didn't even take care of their babies, which is weird because you imagine like <laughs> really small long necks going around and taking care of themselves. It's weird. But anyway, Littlefoot's siblings didn't make it as per what the narrator said. And we look up at, we can look back at the first movie real quick before we go on to Littlefoot scene, just to, just to confirm, Ducky had her own clutch of siblings when she was born. The siblings that we see in the later movies, I think is the second sibling, the one that hatched 
from, was it Land Before Time 3? The one with the egg stealers? The ones that stole her nest? Or no, Chomper, the second one. The egg stealers were in the second movie and those were her little siblings. I think that those are the ones she's talking about. Those are the ones that are there now that we see. However, the ones that were born at the same time Ducky was born, we never see them again. Here's proof. <laughs> Notice there are duckies, other eggs up there. Let's count how many there are, aside from ducky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What happened to ducky siblings? It's never spoken of. <laughs> They're all her babies. So, Mrs. Yushin had all those babies, and Ducky is the only survivor. Now look at Sarah. <laughs> Sarah had three other siblings. What happened to them? She also had a mom. That was her dad on the left, her mom on the right. <laughs> So you can see her other siblings in the picture. I'm not crazy. And then she even told Littlefoot, when I find my sisters, I won't be alone. At least we wouldn't be alone. Well, when I find my sisters, I won't be alone. So go away. So she confirms, as we did with her eyes, that she has siblings. Never spoken of again. What about Littlefoot? See? And Grandpa and Migor always looked like this. From the first movie, he's always had his entire upper portion one dark color. And Migor, the grandmother, has always had the lighter portion on her nose as well as her underside. One herd had only a single baby. Their last hope for the future. Okay. So he says that, their last hope for the future. The reason why he said that is because that was the only egg that survived. And I can confirm this because in this early shot, when we see Littlefoot's egg starting to hatch, what do you see beside it? Other broken eggs in the same nest. See, they're all broken. What happened to that one? That one is the only one that remained. Littlefoot was supposed to have brothers and sisters. And the way that these eggs busted out, like when you look at how these eggs look, it looks like something fed on them. If a creature is hatching, like nobody talks about this. And this is why I love the first movie. It's so dark without even having to say anything. Because if you look at the holes in the eggs, these are not hatching holes. The entire egg would have been destroyed or one whole part of the egg would have come off. This looks like entry holes. Also, look at the way that the shells are caved in. I think as the baby started to hatch or whatever was going on, something came with its beak and ate the babies out of their eggs. That's why they look like that. And we can prove this because look at the way Littlefoot hatches. One herd had only a single baby, their last hope for the future. <laughs> and they called him Littlefoot. See, he comes out through one end and the egg disintegrates. Now granted the egg was cracked when it fell, but as we see from the way they hatch here is the entire egg basically explodes and the baby comes out or the baby comes out of one end. Yet in his nest, the eggs are pretty much still intact with several points. So unfortunately for Littlefoot, I think his babies got, I think his siblings got eaten. Now look at this creature. Isn't that Ozzy? Isn't that the truth of my miss? Whatever. Yet, even hatching could be dangerous. So he was trying to grab the egg. That was an egg stealer. He was trying to grab the egg. But if you look at his beak, something similar to him could have just eaten the eggs, eaten the babies straight from out of the shell. I think his grandparents and his mother was sleeping and something came by while they weren't aware of it and had a little snack and Littlefoot was the last baby remaining. There are many creatures like reptiles and birds that do the same thing with eggs even today, like this vulture. I'm then the jackal, but it's not home free yet. You see, here on the Serengeti, the sound of a cracked eggshell is like a news flash. <gasps> oh my god, you caught my bad side. Oh! 
and nobody ever talks about it. It's so funny. So Doki is the only lone survivor of all of her siblings. This is the second batch of siblings, which is weird because why wouldn't Ducky be bigger, right? I think they do it for convenience sake so that they could just change the colors a little bit on the same palette or template for the drawing. So they all look similar to Ducky and they don't have to worry about doing too much work. Besides, it wasn't very long, Ducky's still a baby herself, so her mom had the next clutch. So some of her younger clutch of siblings are missing, not to mention all of her direct siblings that hatched alongside her are probably dead. They probably got eaten. And I think about all those movies that came before, how many times Littlefoot and his friends were supposed to die. And I just imagine Ducky's little brothers and sisters also having their own adventures, like in some parallel universe, and they got killed. What was times that Ducky was supposed to be killed that happened to her siblings. What if, <laughs> what if every time one died, another one came and replaced Ducky? Oh my God. Now we're talking about a whole bunch of different things. So Ducky is playing and she's still very upset with Spike. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so cute to see Mrs. Yushin playing with her children. I am Miss Swimming Shark Tooth. <laughs> it's so cute. And you never really see that. You never see the parents actually playing with their kids. And you do see it in later movies. But I think it's so sweet of them to show that there. Especially with Ducky and her mom. Where is Anthony Yushin? Hmm. In one of my audio fan fictions, we find that out and it's it's a whole ordeal, but whatever. <laughs> so Spike is all sad and he's starting to feel like he doesn't belong. Having met other Spike Tails that look like him and other young ones that look like him, he's starting to realize, hmm, I'm adopted. I don't look like them. I don't act like them. And he feels left out. Ducky, I think Spike feels left out. I cannot help it if I can swim, but Spike cannot. I am a swimmer and he is not. No, no, no. Oh! I feel kind of bad for Spike. I mean, it's not his fault he's annoying, but I also understand where Ducky's coming from because if he comes in your life and it's like a little bit of sibling rivalry, if he's always annoying you, taking what's yours, eating all your lunch, you're gonna feel like, okay, now you're just impeding on my space. And I like how they show Ducky in this light too because she is a bit of a brat sometimes and they don't often show that, but they do show it here the family dynamic, which is very realistic. And her bragging is basically her saying, yeah, whatever. Anyways, Tippy comes and so does his mom. And she's like, oh, there you are. And I love the shade that she throws. <laughs> it's not really shade, like she's not mean, but you could tell like the way she delivers it. She was thinking something like, um, okay. It just made me crack up. We meet again. And where is your family, dear? Hello, I'm his mother. Really? How nice. <laughs> oh my god, that was great. The way she said it. Really? How nice. <laughs> you know that underhanded way? Like, you ever had a family that adopted, like, an Asian person or a black person or a black family that adopted a white person? And they're like, oh, who's that? Oh, here's my mom. And the mother's, like, a completely different, ethni uh, different ethnicity, you know? And you're like, oh, hi. <laughs> I've seen people do that shit. It's so annoying. Like, I I'm used to seeing that, but for someone who's not used to it, like, like they see a black mother with a white child, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be thinking a whole bunch of different things. Or if it's a white woman and a white man and they have an ethnic child, like somebody who's a different ethnicity than them, people are thinking it, but they're not saying it. But the way that they say it, you can, they tell you that they're thinking it. And it's so freaking rude, but you can understand where they're coming from. Because you know people are like, oh, you adopted a black kid. And then you look at the husband and you're like, anyway. <laughs> It's so dumb, but it's just hilarious that they would do this here in the Land Before Time movie. So Mrs. Yushin, who I, I can't stand when they do this, it, it rubs me the wrong way. Her horn is supposed to be black. It's supposed to be coming out of her head. See? They're like, most of the movie, she looks like, you know, it's just the same color as like an extension in her skin. And then the other times, it'll be a whole horn sticking through it. I'm like, stick with one thing. Jesus Christ. It's like a dick on her head. He could see how his own kind live. Oh, wow. Would you like that, Spike? 
I like how Mrs. Yushin asks him, like, would you like that? You know, she doesn't want to. Because her, her fear is, that's my baby. And if he finds out where he came from, he might not want to be with me anymore, seeing as his mom anymore. So this is basically like adoption story, what adopted kids go through. And Spike is happy because he's not used to seeing someone who looks like him. So Marsha's like, I'll have him back before the bright circle leaves the sky. And as Spike is walking away, he feels bad about leaving his family and his mom and Ducky are just standing there looking so cute. Like the way they stand, they actually look like dinosaurs and they're just standing there like, oh my God, he's leaving. And you could tell that in the shot, they are so worried. Even though Ducky's mad at him, like the thought of her losing her brother still bothers her. Like she still wants to be mad at him. But at the same time, that's her brother. She loves her brother. As much as she squabbles with him, she doesn't want to see him leave. And that's a very real possibility that this, this day has come. The day that they all dreaded that Spike was going to find another Spike Tail family and they were going to take him away. Are we go back in the water, Ducky? Maybe later. Just the interaction between her and her mom. My, th that really builds a lot of character. And I do love the Land Before Time movies for that. That's something I love doing in my fan fictions. Not just with the kids, but also with their parents as well and their guardians. It's very important. Like the, the guardians, Littlefoot's grandparents, Sarah's dad, Victor was my original character, Sarah's cousin, Ducky and Spike. Spike being able to talk now. Peach's not a part of it. But they all have interactions with their parents, with each other, and with other kids as well. Well. And I love doing that because it's heavy. It's very dialogue heavy. It's narrated kind of like what I do with the logic holic monster verse adventures, but I love doing it. I'll even go and listen to them over again because you also get a lot of lore. It might not be official land before time lore, but you get a lot of lore from the characters that way. The way they handle certain situations, you end up hating some of them, but then you end up understanding why they do the things they do, why they think the way they do. It's just so much fun and I miss doing it. Oh my God. So Spike... <laughs> What the hell? Bruh. Why does he look like that? <laughs> all the other, all the other freaking, oh my god. No, they're all bad. What in the? Seriously, seriously, I, I understand not drawing a lot of detail when they're far away, but my god, what is wrong with this one? What is happening right now? What in the shit in Godzilla? <laughs> It's like that the entire time! Kokaina. So even Littlefoot and the others start to notice that Spike is hanging out with this herd. What are you doing, Petrie? Spike really spends a lot of time hanging out with the other Stegosauruses. Ducky is upset and probably a bit jealous. The mother wants Spike to stay again. And Mrs. Yushin is like, go ahead, you can stay with them one more night. I mean, they're having so much fun. And it's very realistic. They're like, okay, it's another Spike tail and someone to play with. And this part's really sad. Poor Ducky. She feels like she's losing her brother. Like right there, the brother, he, this is probably over what? The space of a week? We know that the Stegosaurus is there for a while. Maybe it's a space of a week, few days. And every time Spike chooses not to come back and hang out with his family and stays there, in the back of their minds, they're thinking, he's gonna leave. He's gonna leave. And in the middle of the night, we see Ducky's siblings. What, now there's what, four others? And she's always, you'd think that she'd have a comfortable sleep, but it's bothering her because that's where Spike usually sleeps by his mom. Mom. And she goes over there because she usually sleeps on Spike. As bad as he sleeps, she's now finding a newfound appreciation for her brother and she misses him. And that part there was so sweet. Like that attention to detail of her missing him like that is one of the reasons I love these movies. As much as I make fun of them and how annoying they are with the different continuity issues, I really, really do love them. Like, I, you guys don't understand, like Land Before Time got me through a lot when I was growing up. They're my freaking imaginary friends for crying out loud. Even though Littlefoot got hooked on drugs and Petrie died. And Spike's not really friends with anyone. He's like the INTJ character. He's like really superior to everyone else. He's super smart, has his own lab now, does his own stuff. But Sarah and Ducky are still a big part of my life, as is Allie sometimes. And Victor who's not officially in the land for time. He's a made up character, but he's Sarah's father's sister's son that she abandoned after she had like four other boys. Long stories. Anyway, they got me through a lot and it's so fun. These characters were interesting enough for me to take them with me throughout life and add my own spin on them. Like that is really, really big for me. And that's saying a lot about the characters. Now, part of it's because I also like dinosaurs very much. Although now Sarah and Ducky don't look exactly like dinosaurs in my world. They have their original 
original heads, but they have other bodies, like human bodies. Anyway, I always go off into a tangent when I'm doing these freaking videos. I'm sorry. But after Ducky is sleeping, guess what happens? It snows again. And this time, I don't know how nobody wakes up. Like, I have no idea how they sleep so freaking deeply. Then again, they're a lot more active. So maybe they are like asked out by the end of the night. They realized, wow, Littlefoot was telling the truth all along. <sighs> <laughs> I love the brain freeze reaction afterwards. I love how it waits, wait for him to swallow it, wait for it to hit his stomach, then. <laughs> so realistic, I love it. But guess who gets in trouble? Mr. Thick Nose. Get his face color right. In all my years. So why is it happening now? Sounds like a mafia boss. Mr. Tops even chimes in and he's like, this stuff is horrible. It's so slippery. I couldn't make it up the way from my nest. Or I almost couldn't make it up the way from my nest. Yeah, he slid backwards right into my nose. <laughs> it was really funny. See, white sparkles from the sky. Just like I told you. What did you say, Littlefoot? Go ahead, Littlefoot. I... Uh... Oh, here we go. So Littlefoot ends up telling them that, yeah, I told people about this. He's like, who'd you tell, Littlefoot? All my friends. And uh, Mr. Thicknose. And then they're like, what? You knew about this? And he threw him under the bus. You know, damn well, you didn't have to do that. But he was telling the truth. But then Littlefoot only chooses when to tell the truth and who to tell the truth to. You know, damn well, in the back of his mind, he was like, I don't want to rob Mr. Thicknose of his dignity. But, I mean, the bitch did tell on me and to my grandfather. So, I mean... You know, the boy said something, but it seemed so unlikely. We're really disappointed in you. We thought you knew everything. So did I. And so Mr. Thicknose's pride has been squashed. That's partly his fault as well. The Stegosaurus decide that they're leaving because, I mean, this is the stuff they walked away to get away from. And now it's here. So there's no point in them staying here. <laughs> <laughs> Spike. Mm. No? I do not like that. Ducky's still mad at him, and she's probably doubly mad at him. Mad at him because, you know, he treated her kind of unfairly, or she was annoyed at him. And mad at him because he chose to stay with that other family. To the point where she doesn't even know why she's still mad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that looked like fun! So they are start playing with the snow, and that's where the first snow fights came from. Maybe. Oh. Oh, oh. Watch it, kid! Me sorry. I don't like Petrie, though, in the later movies. Not really his character, but I do like him in the later movies because he grows up a little bit. He's still annoying, but you can start to see him kind of shedding that blanket of annoyance. Anyway, everyone plays in the snow and Littlefoot really likes it. And I, again, I like watching the interaction between the parents. Ducky starts to feel good about being with Spike again. She starts actually playing with Spike and with Tippy. Hey, guys. Uh, hey. Good shot, Mom. Happy to help, dear. Oh. I love how his mom just laced her with that snowball. It's so freaking good. His mom is such a badass. I love her so much. Hey, long neck. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, damn, well, he's laughing because the kids are laughing. The kids weren't laughing. He would have been like, bitch, who are you throwing that snowball at? I'm bigger than you. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> I can imagine Gourmet wasn't expecting. You can see he was tight. You can see he was tight when he threw that snowball at him. Even the fact that Mario is playing too, that makes a lot of, just gives me a lot of chills. Like, I had such good feelings watching this. Well, time to head for the nest. Aww. Night, little foot. Bye. Good night, night, Sarah. Good night. Night, Spike. <laughs> this was a good day. Yep, yep, yep. Yo, the way that her mom... <laughs> The way that her mom just comes to the shot like that, yo, that's freaking terrifying, my guy. You're not expecting her to be there. Yo, what in Siren Head, man? It's just, it's just too much, yo. That is great. I wish there was a Trevor Henderson thing, like, 
It's just called the dinosaur or the prehistoric. And it's this thing that just stands in alleyways. It's right in your periphery. You can never directly look at it, right? You can never directly look at it, but you know it's there and you can feel it. And when you turn around to look, it's not there. You just hear some scaly bristles, like its scales are moving on its body and bones are crunching. And if you use your peripheral vision, and you turn your head to the side and look straight ahead, but kind of look at the side as well, you can see it standing there. And every time you look with your peripheral vision, it gets closer and closer. And then nothing. And everybody who's come into contact with this thing, and it gets closer until it's right beside you in your peripheral vision, is found with all their bones broken and turned to mush inside their flesh. They're literally like bones and muscle that looks as though it's been chewed up and spat out. Like something huge ate it chomped on it, grinded it, and spat it back out as minced meat. And the only way they can identify these people is because either they were missing or their teeth are in that grinded muscle bone mixture. It's freaking disgusting. Ew. I just came up with that. But yeah, in my in my Trevor Henderson universe, the guy who made Siren Head and all those different monsters, that's what that would be. Or SCP or whatever. Mm-hmm. Come on, Spike. Let us go home. Mm-hmm. Oh. If you'd like to stay another night, it's okay. Oh, poor ducky. (laughs) At this point, she's like, okay, I'm not mad at him anymore. I had a good day with him. Now I appreciate him being my brother. And again, ducky's mom's horn is now covered once again with its natural color because they can't make up their mind on what it's supposed to look like. If you'd like to stay another night, it's okay. Yay, yay! Well, come on, boys. Let's go home. That's what I found out every single time I watched this that Tippy was a boy. <laughs> and in Ducky's mother's mind, she's probably doing what's best for Spike. She's not gonna tell him that he can't hang around other Spike tails. It's like having an adopted baby who's Chinese or black and telling them they can't hang around other Chinese or black people. It snows some more, and Littlefoot tells his grandfather that he really likes the sparkling sky stars. I like the white ground sparkles. Don't you, Grandpa? Yes, Littlefoot. I do. Do you still like the brown sparkles, Littlefoot? Maybe not as much as I thought. (laughs) Because it's so cold, all the food has fallen from the trees. People are starting to fight over it. Even Mr. Thicknose tried to get a tree star that Grandpa lost. And Mr. Thicknose is like, I'm hungry, dude. And he's like, yeah, we're all hungry, bro. But he crushes the, he crushes the leaf instead of eating it. Would you expect him to know what it would be like? Well, everybody says he's been... Look at his horns, by the way. Look at Mario's horns. They do this in every movie now, and it's so annoying. If it's not Sarah's eyelids, it's his horns. See, they're horns going inside flabs of skin coming out of his head. How they're supposed to look. Everywhere and he knows everything. If you Now they're in a freaking ponytail. Even the one on his nose. Do people not color things in? Like, so annoying. He, he doesn't know much at all. And I don't think he should be allowed to confuse the young ones with his crackpot ideas. Oh no. <sighs> See, Mr. Thignos kind of did that to himself too because he kind of went out there and said he knew everything and Littlefoot, a kid, came over and was like, yeah, this is the case and he didn't listen to him and now they're in this confluggery. I don't know what, what word to use there. But Mr. Threehorn also makes it a habit of blaming anyone who's directly responsible or indirectly responsible in his mind. In his mind, he was like, you were supposed to know about this. You could have told us so we would know to put away some food. Is he the only dinosaur though who's been out there? There's so many people who are in the Great Valley. Some people grew up there. Some people have always been native to the valley. And there are others that have come from faraway places the mysterious beyond. Nobody else knew about the, the snow and nobody, really? All the migratory dinosaurs that pass through there all the time and nobody knows. And again, again, I know I have to keep reiterating this and I know people say that they mentioned this in the show, but again, a herd of stegosauri were able to walk right into the Great Valley encumbered and 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 yet it's safe from sharp teeth. What stops the sharp teeth from doing it? If you ask me, he doesn't know much at all. And I don't think he should be allowed to confuse the young ones with his crackpot ideas. Gosh. Reaction. He's like, that's cold, man. It's cold out here too, but it's cold in your heart. Jesus Christ. 
So Gourmet tells Mr. Threehorn that he's being unreasonable, and Mr. Threehorn admits that, yeah, he can't help being unreasonable right now, he's freaking hungry. By that logic, Mario, maybe you shouldn't have stepped on the tree star that just flew down that Mr. Thicknose was about to eat. I mean, you could have eaten it. Anyway, the Stegosaurus say that they're leaving before the Great Circle touches the sky or whatnot, which probably means Spike is coming too. Hey, wake up! You hear the news? Uh, what? The Spike Tail's leaving the Great Valley. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> She's happy because she gets her brother back. Man, I love Ducky in this movie. She's so real and down to earth. She's such a snob, but I love it. The way she shoved them off, she was like, get the fuck, what are you waking me up like that for? Not everyone's gonna be happy. Petrie's probably the only person who's genuinely like happy or down for anything. Petrie's the kind of person that would have a girlfriend that he would love and simp for like 24 seven. And she'd be like, all right, I'm going out on a date as his girlfriend. He'd be like, but, but you're my girlfriend. She'd be like, and, and he's like, okay, honey, be back safe. Like that's the kind of person Petrie would be. And then people like me and the rest of his friends would want to slap him because he's allowing himself to be treated that way. And he would just be like, no, she's actually a good person i legit have like three friends that are like that they're dudes that just one of them have been giving all of his money i hope he's not watching this one of them have been giving all of his money to this girl for like three to five years no puss nothing nothing she's like come over here rub my feet do my chores give me money and he's in love with her and she knows it trust me she knows she slaves with someone else and he's just happy to be in her presence like bro i don't know like i get that there's some girls that like that but i've had that happen to me where guys started worshiping me and i'm like i legit told him like i don't like that that's nasty like what if someone comes and takes advantage of you what if i took advantage of you no it's okay i'm like you know what no 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 <laughs> And they're teaching people to stand up for themselves and they like the humiliation, apparently. That's not my personality. I don't like stepping on people, but most human beings in some way, shape or form are gonna step on you if you do that. At least Petrie's honest about who he is. But then he has those moments that you'll see in several movies when he talks back and he's like, I'm sorry, did, did I hear something? And that's what makes me respect him so much. Uh oh. Do not worry, Spike. I am sure they will come back someday. Did I ask you for your opinion? So Spike is visibly sad and Ducky's like, <laughs> Yep, why? Don't worry. Be happy. playing with that other spike tail. I will show him I am the best sister. I am the only sister that he'll ever love. And there'll be no one to take him away ever again. No, no, no. Spike! <laughs> I'm sorry this happened. Not all of us want you to go. We'll be all right. We're wanderers. Oh boy, here he comes. So, Marsha is like, um, so, uh, you know, about this parting ways thing. I hate to ask. <laughs> it's just the way a ducky and Petri. <laughs> I just snapped my back. <laughs> Yo, I laughed so hard, my, my back went fuck. I, I don't know quite how to ask this, but would he? What? Why, no, I'm sure he wouldn't. I, I mean... Where's family? <laughs> I'll ask him. She's acting like she's not his mom. Like, I understand why she's doing that, but he's still a minor, so, or a kid, or whatever. I mean, they're dinosaurs, so it's different, but you know what I mean. And I know she's doing the right thing, and she wants Spike to be happy, but the thing about Mrs. Yushin, which I basically got spot on based on what I could see in the movies, is that she is a free, like, she wants her kids to be free, and that's wonderful, but she kind of goes too overboard with it to the point where they, what's the word? They're not unruly, but she doesn't act like a parent. Like, there's no rule rules like she'll have rules but the father was the one who would instill them she's just like do you guys want to go to school today i don't feel like going to school today well you have to i don't feel like it all right but just remember that if you don't you know <laughs> and then anthony she would come home with you why the fuck are these kids here 
Like, I low-key had a crush on Anthony Yushin, though, because he was just, like, so cool. There's a whole bunch of stuff with that. Oh, God. I can't wait to you guys. Ugh. I'll get to it. I trust me. I have to find... I know where they are. They're on my hard drive somewhere. And I have so many hard drives, and they're in, like, different places that I hid them. Didn't hide them for, like, you know, you know what I mean? I didn't hide them. It's the wrong word to use. It sounds hella nefarious. But I put them away, and, um, then I have my NAS drive, and I have to find those to transfer them over to the big one. It's a long story. I haven't seen them in, like, two years. All the Land Before Time stuff are on there. Every single one. And it will take me a while to re-upload them. They're also shows that I did a lot long time ago so i flub in them the audio is not so great and if you guys are totally okay with that then fine that's what you'll get do you want to go with them spike huh? we'll understand if you do mm. ducky and i just want what's best for you um i did not say that So Spike is having a very hard time. He wants to stay with his family, but he wants to go with these other three, uh, sorry, not three horns, Spike Tails. And it must be so conflicting for him because he likes being with his own kind. They understand him for who he is. He feels normal around them. All of his ways that he acts or stuff that he does, it's very different than his friends. He eats like all the time. And as Marsha and the other Stegosaurus put it, look, Stega, we Spike Teals, we eat a lot. We eat more than our fair share. And there's not going to be enough for everyone. At least they're aware of it. They're like, oh, we, eat, we eat a ton of food, dude. So they understand as they've gotten older what their appetite is like. They're like cows. They are always eating. So they have to move on because there's barely any food left in the Great Valley for even like one dinosaur. To survive, what they must do? So Spike knows that. He's probably thinking about that. And Ducky is just sitting there like, all right, you know what? Since you're not going to make up your mind, I'll do it for you because she doesn't want to wait for Spike to say, I'm choosing someone other than you and your family. So she basically takes control of the situation. If it is so hard to figure out, I will do it for you. Go, go, go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Goodbye, Spike. We'll miss you. We'll come back someday soon, won't we, Spike? So, Mrs. Yushin is trying to be a good sport, and she sees her baby walk away. Now this, she, Ducky went home to the Great Valley when they went back to reunite with their parents, and she had Spike in tow. And from that point in time, well... Mrs. Yushin has been taking care of Spike. That is her son. As far as she knows, that's her baby. It's very different, much bigger than the others, but that is her child. So watching him walk away, knowing that this is probably the best thing for him, it's still very hard for her. I do not understand why Spike would leave his own family. Bitch! Oh my god! You told him to go! What in the world? She just said, I'll make your choice for you. Go. Go, Spike. And Spike left. And then she's all like, I don't understand why he would leave us. <laughs> this is why, this is why some people choose violence. Seriously. It, there's no excuse for it. I'm, I'm saying that right now. But I can understand sometimes. <laughs> Why? You wouldn't do it in real life, but you know damn well in Grand Theft Auto when y'all are playing and someone cuts you off, you get out with your freaking Uzi and you're lighting up their car. You know damn well what I'm talking about. Don't front. Y'all know that you do the same thing too. Someone runs the red light, goes to your car, you chase them down, take them up their car and beat them within senses of their life and then you steal their money and then you take their car on top of it. Like everyone knows how that feels. If you ever felt that rage, that is one of the only places <laughs> that you can let it out. Thank God for GTA, right? This is one of those moments when I would react in my head like, okay, ducky, okay, let me take your neck and hold you by it and flip you around and put you on the end of a muffler and have the monoxide fill up your body like one of those freaking squeeing chicken toys. And the smut was that? <laughs> chicken smut. I think smut's the right word, right? Isn't that the thing where you watch people getting killed or whatever? Whatever. I do not understand why Spike would leave his own family. I mean, then what is a family anyway? And then they start the family singing. And there's her siblings. Why did they only ever show three others? But when Ducky was sleeping with her mother, we saw four others. Maybe one of them goes off on adventures with their own friends like Ducky does with her friends. Who knows? Or is it someone that we like the best? actually cute her singing with her mom because the first time we hear mrs yushin actually singing and there's sarah's telltale look 
getting angry right before she sings. Something that we have to rise above. It's honestly heartbreaking to see Mrs. Yushin dealing with this. Like, she never imagined that Spikes would ever leave them or some would become for him. And so that's why she was kind of shocked when she was like, oh my, you know, like someone, someone's actually taking an interest in adopting my child. And then she took him the second day and then she's like, can we just take him forever? <laughs> And so I like that they show from her perspective as a mother what that's like. I don't have any kids, but I do have dogs and they're like my kids. So I could kind of understand what that's like. Sort of, I'm not, I'm not giving my dogs up. So later that night, and I want you to see this interaction between Ducky and her mom because I had made my fanfic fan fiction with the interaction between Ducky and her mom the way it was before I'd even seen this movie. I'm pretty sure. And it's interesting watching this over now and seeing that because I basically had Ducky's personality down perfectly. Because at that time, I didn't see her as being a snob but really I didn't notice all those things like I did a little bit but not to the degree I do now but she actually loses her temper with her mom and her mom doesn't say anything like doesn't act like the other parents but she does kind of like hey what's going on so Ducky is mourning over Spike Ducky it, it's for his own good Spike needs more food than we do I know besides they'll be back you heard what Tippy's mom said I know and he's never had a chance to spend time with other Spike Tails he needs to be with his own kind. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Did you see her face? Oh, she's like, I know, Mom. I know. Yeah, and then that, and the ducky's like, oh my oh god. <laughs> this is so freaking real. I love it. Oh my god, dude. This is great, because what kid hasn't done this? And her mom's being so nice. Her mom's being a little annoying, but she's actually being really nice. Like, I didn't have that. My mom wasn't the nicest person, okay? So, but I've had those situations where she was the opposite. She was mean and I made that face and you go behind your room door and you can't, you can't say shit to your mom. Like my country, you cannot talk back to your mom like that. You can't say shit to her. She will slap you clean across the room and through a glass window. So I would go behind my room door and stick up my middle fingers. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you. Because we're not allowed to express ourselves. We're not allowed to get any of that frustration out. And of course, we're human. We're, we're mammals. We have to be able to have some form of expression for our frustration. Especially if your parent's being unreasonable. But here, Ducky is just like, leave me the hell alone. I don't want to talk about it. You know, it is what it is. Stop talking. And her mom just keeps going on and on. He needs to be with his own kind. I know. And it's clear that they love Spike. They're patient and kind and... I know, okay, I know. Ducky. I am sorry, Mama. That so her mom is very <laughs> like, come on, girl. Why'd you just yell at me? And Ducky apologizes to her mom. And her mom says, it's okay, honey. I understand. Because that's just how Mrs. Yushin is. She is very nurturing. She rarely ever gets angry to that point. And then Ducky lies. Like, Ducky goes from being an awful sister, very snobby, to being an asshole with her mom, to straight up lying on her. She says that she has to go meet with Mr. Thicknose for something, and we don't ever know what that's for. Turns out later that Ducky actually tried to find Spike. Then it gets even more awkward when Mrs. Yushin comes to the friends and asks about Ducky seeing Mr. Thicknose. And she said that, you know, you guys, she told me that you guys were gonna go say, see him before he went off or something. And the friends are just like uh okay because they can't lie they realize okay ducky lied we don't want to sell her out because it would look weird where's ducky is mr thicknose gone uh, huh i was so glad when ducky told me he was meeting with you children today it's given her something to think about besides spike you miss him too we sure do yeah so do i See, <laughs> the front, there's some OGs. Ducky would not have done that for him, for them. Unless everybody else was in on it, Ducky would have been like, oh, I don't, I don't see her. <laughs> Ducky's an asshole. Like, she fronts, but she's a huge asshole, especially in my stories. She's very kind and cute, but everyone forgets how much of an asshole she is because of how cute she is. It's very easy to overlook that. Anyway, we're going to stop it here. We're a little bit farther ahead, maybe like 57% of the movie. And I'm not angry or upset. I actually like this movie. This movie and the one after are one of my favorite ones because they're actually decent. Actually decent. Still have some stupidity about them, but I actually fell in love with it all over again watching it.
using these. So we'll come back and we will, you know, continue where we left off. This little doodle is called Foxes on the Prairie, where two different species or breed of fox end up meeting each other. One guy is from an arctic biome and this one is from the prairie. And despite looking so different, they can find similarities in each other. The red fox tells the arctic one all about her biome while she intently listens about his stories and adventures from his faraway place. The bigger question is how did he come to be there? Anyways, thanks so much for watching. If this has been Old Yuri, you ask, we answer.